Welcome to the first Echinodermata video. Uh, the phylum Echinodermata does include sea stars. That's why we have Patrick here. And uh, we'll jump right into it with the taxonomy. There are five different classes that you'll be responsible for. The Asteroidea, which are the sea stars. Ophiroidea, brittle stars and basket stars. Echinoidea, sea urchin sandals and hard urchins. Holothuroidea, which are sea cucumbers. And finally, crinoidea. Crinoids, sea lilies, and feather stars. Now, obviously, that seems like a lot, but uh, you will get a chance to uh, get a lot of repetitive enforcement as we go through these in the next videos and as we look very closely at these animals in the lab. Here are uh, a few local ones. We've got uh, a reef star, a sun star, which you'll see at Leisure Island quite often. Cushion stars um, by the millions at Pilot Bay, other places, in shallow water. There's an 11 arm starfish. Uh, brittle, brittle star, a model brittle, brittle star, which is one of the uh, three very common brittle stars that we have around the coast on shallow rocky reefs. Uh, a snapper biscuit or a sand dollar. A kinna. And sea cucumbers. And here are a couple of uh, deep water uh, asteroidians that uh, came up on the um, Tongaroa, the Niwa research vessel, just to give you a, an idea of how big these things can get. Okay, little um, little bit of uh, etymology and uh, um, terminology for you. Echinodermata, the phylum name, means spiny skin. And if you think about echina, that makes sense. Where do they live? They're exclusively marine. And ask yourself what the question why they aren't terrestrial. And as you go through the video, see if you can figure that out. Adults are benthic. Okay, so they have a free-swimming larval stage, much like peripherans. But all of the Echinodermata adults are live on the substrate or within it. Okay, we have talked about symmetry and we've talked about radial symmetry. So um, it is a form of radial symmetry that they have, but uh, they have what's called pentamerous radial symmetry. And if you look at the arms of the, or the radii of the, or the spokes of the wheel on this circle to below, it looks like a starfish pattern. So usually they have, they can be divided into five equal um, portions and like slicing a pie or a pizza. Um, and so they generally, and that's why it's called pentamerous radial symmetry. However, um, they sometimes have more than five arms. They can usually, it's a prime number, seven, 11, uh, but they'll have a uh, prime number of arms. Usually it's five though. They have a skeleton, um, which is different from our skeleton, but it's composed of uh, little, what you, could, uh, what you could think of as little bony segments. Um, they're calcareous. We have a lot of calcium carbonate in our bones, and uh, uh, these things also have calcium carbonate. They're calcareous, and they're called ossicles. Okay. So here is a nice picture of the skeleton of a um, sea star. Now, we know that they're not uh, rigid. We know that sea stars are flexible. So at least in the asteroidians, then the ossicles are not linked together, but they're, they have a, a bit of muscle and connective tissue in between the ossicles, 
so that they are able to move and bend. Not all ossicles are, um, have that connective tissue between them though. If we look at a kinospine, or a, sorry, a kinotest, and this is called a test, all the ossicles are fused together with uh, these bumps where the spines attach. And every one of those bumps that you see is a place where a spine will uh, attach and you'll get the living uh, common porcupine effect that you get or that you're familiar with with kinna. And we'll look at those very closely in lab. Now all, all uh, echinodermata have these ossicles, but in the sea cucumbers, the holothuroidians, they are um, reduced to microscopic, uh, very small um, little bits that are within the, uh, uh, the tissue of the skin. And uh, they can be used to identify um, the species of holothuroidians because each species much like the spicules of a sponge will have different shaped uh, spicules, the um, different species of sea cucumbers will have different shapes of ossicles. Echinodermata all have something called a water vascular system, which is unique to, the, to this phyla, uh, or this phylum. And it is a way that they can they uh, move themselves and feed themselves, and they use hydraulic pressure. So uh, muscles drive the system, but it's like a hydraulic line, just like uh, something that would drive a a digger arm or a, um, possibly a crane. Okay, so it is a hydraulic pressure. And here we have a picture of what the um, water vascular system looks like. All right, so if you can imagine each of these, um, these lines that are going away from the circle radiating down the arm of a starfish, then that is what you're looking at. There's a nice explanation on the um, uh, the one of the other videos um, that uh, shows a lot of beautiful imagery and video of the water vascular system in action. Suffice it to say, the madreporite is like a sieve. It allows water into the body of the starfish, into these canals, and the um, madreporite sits on the top surface of the of an asteroidian and we'll be able to look at those madreporites in detail in the uh, lab. The stone canal leads down from the madreporite to allow the water from that's external to get into the ring canal which is the central link in the center of the body of a starfish and that will allow the water that comes in from the outside to flow around to each of the arms. The water can then radiate down the large canal that goes down the length of the arm. And if you think of it as radiating down or a radius, it is the radial canal. And then from there, water can move outwards to the lateral canal and out to the tube foot, which is made up of the ampulla, podium, and sucker. And these are used, the tube feet are used to suck onto the uh, surface or onto whatever they're eating or if they're trying to avoid predation and clamping down and trying to avoid being torn away, turned upside down and um, eaten by some predator, they can hold on to the substrate. The polyan vesicle 
is essentially a big water bag that is muscular and it can squeeze and rapidly add water to the system or it can expand and take water out of the system depending on how much volume is needed at any one given time. And um, oh, the, te the pulley and vesicles, if you know anything about hydraulics, can be thought of as a hydraulic sump for the oil. Okay, the Tiedemann's bodies are a filtering organism, or, a, or sorry, a for, filtering organ that s removes particulate matter out of the water within the um, water vascular system so that it doesn't get clogged. Here's a close-up of the madreporite, and you can see the um, sieve-like nature of this, which will allow the water to be, um, to make sure, or it helps to keep large particles out of the water vascular system that may clog it up. And that's something on the surface of the, of the um, echinoderm. Okay, these slides you can um, stop and look at. They are an ex explanation of what we were talking about when we were looking at the overall graphic of the water vascular system. Here's the second one you can read. There's a third one you can read and stop and we'll explain more about this in class. Reproduction, overall um, characteristics of echinoderms in terms of reproduction, they're mostly dioecious, which means that they have both, they're either male or they're female, rather than uh, hermaphrodites. And they all have external fertilization they broadcast spawn. That means they just throw their gametes, their eggs and sperm, up into the water column and hope they'll find each other rather than having copulation. So this video is uh, now finished. That was the explanation of uh, general characteristics of echinoderms. And we'll look at the individual classes in videos uh, the following videos.